It's Thursday, September 10th, 2015. I'm Soren Baker, and this is DX Daily. TI protege Doe B was shot and killed at a nightclub in Montgomery, Alabama in December 2013. Now, in a recent Instagram post, Cash Out gang member Shaka says that Tip owes Doe B's estate $100,000. Now, that claim didn't sit well with the Grand Hustle Honcho. Check TI's response. I did my part cuz Doe was on his way to becoming the notorious B.I.G. of the South. And y'all let him get killed in y'all city that y'all supposed to run? And now because you can't find another opportunity, that's what Doe was. You looking to point the blame elsewhere. Typical. Now what do you make of this exchange between T.I. and Shaka? Hit us up in the comment section. Now T.I. speaks highly of Doe B's potential, but could you imagine Kanye West's career and how it would be different had he signed with Cash Money Records? Mickey Halstead says that Kanye West almost signed with a Louisiana imprint. During an interview with DJ Booth, Mickey Halstead says he got wind that the deal wasn't happening while he was working on his album for Cash Money. I come up there asking about when Kanye was gonna get started on my album. They were like, man, we found out he samples. We don't wanna use no Kanye beats because we don't fuck with sampling. He, referring to Birdman, didn't wanna pay for clearing samples and he felt that was gonna affect the publishing and that was part of the racket that he was running. He made me sign over my publishing. Everybody that he signed, he took their publishing, took everything. So it was affecting his bottom line. So sampling and publishing issues made Kanye West walk away from a deal with Cash Money Records. How do you guys think Kanye's career would have been different had he signed with Cash Money Records? Let us know what you think in the comment section. Kanye West's decision to forego a deal with Cash Money Records didn't hamper his success. Political rap icon Paris has forged his own successful career by making a bunch of bold decision moves too. During an exclusive interview, Paris and I discuss his forthcoming Pistol Politics album, which addresses police brutality, gun violence, and political corruption. Check the clip. What's up, everybody? I'm Soren Baker, and today we're joined by rap icon Paris. Appreciate you coming through, man. And we got his new album, Pistol Politics, about to come out September 11th. So Paris, man, uh, you've always been one throughout your career to bring a lot of social commentary and examination of American politics and how that affects the hood into your music mm -hmm. and this album you're bringing in the pistol politics so why how did you go about and decide to add that wrinkle for this project we're in an environment where violence in our communities is, has been amplified in the media but a lot of times in hip-hop and in popular culture it's not spoken on in the entertainment and uh, you know I've always been one to address certain issues and Figured it was time to for the resurgence, right? And uh, your new your new single "Buck Buck Pass" obviously addresses a lot of the gun. Yes, uh, that's just it's, it's it's a gun violence statement. You know, it's not necessarily calling for gun control or anything of that nature, but it's it's just a commentary on what I've seen. You know, and I've I've been through what is now my sixth funeral behind gun related drama. Um, this was, it was a while ago. It was, about a year and a half ago at this point. But most people who feel strongly about it, and you know, especially the don't touch my gun crowd, you know, um, have never experienced violence. So I figured, let me go ahead and put this out and, and say something about it. And it's not just a, a, a black issue, really, that video is, an, is something that touches everybody. Right. But, you know, I wanted to speak on it and, and, uh, and throw my hat in the ring, so to speak. Yeah, because that's one thing that you do do. You show a lot of people who have passed away from gun violence, yeah. and you do it throughout history for hundreds of years. Like, you also do show Abraham Lincoln, for instance. So it's mm -hmm. not... Well, this I mean, is, you know, it's wars, right. you know, throughout the course of slavery, Native Americans, um, Nazis, you know, the, the, the different entertainers that have passed throughout the course of history. And, you know, these, these things are, you know, it, it, it is so bad that it's to the point where I could not update the video fast enough. It was that video, and then it was a, a single that I had called Night of the Long Knives, which was directly about police brutality. And I, I was adding people, there's a tribute section at the end of it, and I couldn't add the people fast enough, you know. So if I look at the video now, I'm like, well, damn, this isn't in it, this isn't in it, this isn't in it, you know. But, um... I figured it had to be said, and, and I hear some people kind of dance around the issue. I know a lot of entertainers are, are afraid to take a stance one way or another for whatever reason, whatever their motivations are, but that's not me. Now, what do you make of Paris's brand of political rap? Hit us up in the comments section and let us know. 
And those are today's top hip-hop headlines. And always, for more music and news, check out hiphopdx.com.